Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to build for you guys today. This is the uh, brand new, soon to be released kit from Tamiya, the 124 scale 4GT. Uh, and when I say soon to be released, so this is a, a early uh, promotional copy that they sent out to us. The kit will actually be released sometime in January worldwide. Has a retail of $54 and is just beautiful inside. I did a review video a few days ago. If you want to go back on my channel, you can look that up and you can see all the different parts. But today we're actually going to build the entire thing. So it uh, comes in a couple of different colors that we can choose to build up on it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that once we get into the video itself. So looks to be a nice one. So let's get started. Okay, before we actually start the build, uh, earlier in the review video I did, I talked about the different colors that we can choose for this kit. And uh, I was searching around for some car colors, and I noticed that Ford has part of their website a configure setup that you can go on here, click configure, and then you can choose different colors for your car. So you can see what the car is going to look like before we actually go ahead and paint it. So we've got it in the, sh the frozen white, the shadow black, the liquid blue, the liquid red. But the other cool thing, which that is a really, really cool looking color, but let's say we do the liquid blue, then you can actually scroll down here and use some of the different racing stripes that to me is included on it. So if we put the ingot silver on, and then you can change the angle and see the different way the ingot silver, or let's say you wanted to go with the, uh, the frozen white decals on it. We give you an idea like that. So it's it's on Ford.com, and you just look up the GT or yeah, the Ford GT, and you'll be able to do that, and you'll be able to mess around with it. I'm still at this particular moment because I'm just starting the kit. I'm debating on color. Probably going to try to get as close as we can with this. We still want to use Tamiya paints on this because we're going to use the aerosol cans. Because I like to show uh, modelers that if you're using, if you're, you know, you don't have a full airbrush set up, you can still get a really nice finish just out of aerosol cans. So let's start the build. Okay, the first step we're going to take on building this kit is we have to start assembling some of the uh, the very, very intricate body panel pieces. And just give you an example, I've cut this one off right here. We don't have any glue on this yet because we want to just do a lot of dry fitting first. And you can see this fits right inside there. And that is going to make up that front piece. Once we glue that down, that'll fit all nice and tight. Uh, what I wanted to also show you is this rear portion. So this portion right here is going to get glued into place just like this. It's got a nice big piece of plastic to glue it together, so it should be nice and stable. One thing is, though, there is supposed to be a clear part that is going to go in here with a decal of, a, uh, of like the mesh work inside there. And what I've kind of done is I've taken some of the other body pot panels and kind of fit them all together here to see if we can go ahead and get that piece in afterward after we get all the painting done because obviously if not we're gonna have to go in there and try to mask down in inside here which is gonna be a little bit more difficult now up to this point right here when this gets attached we still have a really clear shot at this uh, this vent I'm going to put the back on as well we're gonna get these parts glued in here and get the back on and see if we still have pretty good access to this port because if not we will go in and mask it but uh, It'd be a lot easier if we didn't have to. We could just glue it in afterwards. So I'm going to get these couple of pieces glued on as well as the uh, the two front pieces that I just showed you how that went into place because this is going to take a, some real fine work and I want to do it off camera where the camera's not in the way. As we uh, cut some of these parts off here, I wanted to just talk just real fast about these uh, new Tamiya ultra fine cutters and I'm going to move them really close to the camera right here so you hopefully you can see but they are great for getting into these tight little areas because the blades are so small and they cut the uh, the end of the sprue off almost to the point that you don't have to do any sanding on it it leaves just the smallest little bit of plastic behind which you can take down with a smooth file or sanding stick in just just a second there but would highly recommend these uh, new sprue cutters Okay, we're going to attach the back now. 
as it calls out its, its next step. And looking at it also, I still think we'll be able to let's see which side this goes on. Yeah, this side is going to go right here. It's going to get mounted into place there. And I still think we can get at that, uh, that vent without having to uh, worry about masking it off. Now, also in the instructions, it calls out that we install the uh, the tail lights right now. We're going to avoid doing that too because it's a lot of clear parts. We don't want to have to mask over it if we don't have to. And those are very accessible at the end of the build. So we'll work on just some more of the body and we'll leave off all the clear parts for right now. Okay, uh, I was going to glue on all the parts, but I, I had to show you guys how this actually just clicks in here. We've got the one whole side now put together, and I'm about to put this one on, and we're not going to put any glue on it yet, but basically you just line it up to this top part and almost clicks right into place right here. And the fit is just phenomenal on it, especially there are so many different angles on all of this stuff that just line up perfectly. And once you put a tiny bit of cement on it, man, it just, just falls together. Okay, we've gone ahead and attached the nose onto the vehicle. As you can see right here, there was a couple little connection points. And now with that glued on, you can see the general overall shape of the vehicle and how sleek and aerodynamic it looks. But we're gonna put that aside just for a couple seconds here and kind of show you all of these parts. And it may look like we've done a lot, a lot of work, but actually this was actually all pretty easy and straightforward. All we did was cut the parts off the sprue. And in a couple of cases, like we've just glued two pieces together, the top and bottom of this, cause we were gonna paint it all black. So it, get it all done. We also have gone ahead and put some of the uh, ground effects on on the pan here. They're all getting painted the same color, so we just glued those into place. But other than that, these are all just literally cut off the sprue and just painted the TS-29, the semi-gloss black on all these. And then the four suspension pieces, we've painted the XF-16, the flat aluminum. Now, there are a couple of other pieces of the, uh, of the vehicle that we've left off and painted separately, and it's like, for example, this one. This is one of the uh, the pieces that is going to get painted a gloss black or semi-gloss black, I should say, regardless of the color of the vehicle. So if it's whether it's going to be white, blue, red, whatever color we choose, this is going to be like this. And the rest of those little ground effects I showed you on that are going to come up and meet and have all that black effect on the bottom down there. So rather than glue these in, I figured it'd be easier just to paint them separately then we can glue them on later and have a perfectly straight line. And the only other thing we have too is are the seats you can see here there is this insert that is going to get snapped into place here and to me it calls out for the uh, the seats to be black with this insert to be white but playing around on the uh, the Ford website there is an option where this is actually a, a real bright reddish orange and if you choose to go ahead and paint that the, the reddish orange color for the insert on both seats, there also is an insert that will go in the dash area here that has that reddish orange. In fact, uh, if you're looking at the box art, you can see part of it sticking out right here. Now, that reddish orange is an option on this car regardless of the outside color. So we can go ahead and paint it that color. If we decide to do white, black, red, blue, whatever color you choose, that is an option on, it's kind of like a sport option on their website. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and get those painted a color that I hopefully can uh, think is gonna match what they show on the internet. It looks a little bit different than what Tamiya has on the box. And like I said, Tamiya does call out that you can paint them white as well as an insert. So either way, it's gonna make the interior pop a little bit more, just so it's not all black on black on black inside the, uh, the, the driver's compartment. Okay, now that we have all these pieces painted and their paint is all dried, we can actually start going ahead and assembling all of these. And I being very careful now because of putting my lid back on the Tamiya glue because I just spilt it a little while ago, wasn't paying attention and knocked it over. And we'll get this glued into place right here. Keeping in mind too, just make sure that you keep it going the right direction. You want these little pins, hopefully you can see it right there, sticking up so you'll be able to get it. And once this dries, we will be able to go ahead and attach this piece right here, which kind of locks it into place. 
we'll be able to flip it over and then attach the other side of the suspension, which has these big giant pins that lock right in there and I'll line up perfectly for it. But we're gonna let this dry a little bit more and then we'll get this glued on and then we'll start working on the rear suspension. Since we're working on the front suspension, I thought I'd quickly show you also, uh, we have to attach the, uh, the brake calipers and rotors and there's a poly cap that they want you to cut a slice in and makes the getting the wheel on and off a lot easier. We're gonna drop this into place into the hole here and then we glue this on, which is only one way to glue it on because of the, uh, the little pin that's back there. We also have to put in the uh, push rod for the front suspension and that'll get dropped right into place here after we get that painted as well. So I will also put both push rods on and both brake calipers and rotors and the whole assembly on as well. Okay, let me show you what we're working on now. So we've got the uh, the brake caliper and rotor assembly put together and painted. And now we're going to just snap this into place. This part is done without glue, just like that. And we'll get both sides in and put this piece in the front here. We actually have to finish painting that first there. And then with that done, we will be able to go ahead and glue this whole front piece right onto the pan. Get that all built together. This is the rear suspension so far, just two pieces that we have to put, that we've glued together, and that'll get glued into place here. And then basically the brake assembly will be the exact same way, but mounted on back here. Now, as it goes for the, uh, the interior of the car, we've gone ahead and put the sides on, the insides of the door, and built up the dash and the dashboard here. We did just put the, the decal inside of here. We haven't clear coated over it yet, but the little thing that says park and you know how many miles an hour it's going, and that'll get fitted right into place just like that. So pops right in there. But before we do that, I've gone ahead and painted up the red piece that we need for it. That makes that pop like that. And then this is like the little shroud that covers all of that piece there. And that'll get dropped right into position right here. Just like that. And you can see there's some circles down there that line up with this. Those will get dropped in there. And also we've been working on the seats. Here are those red inserts and we've just got done putting the GT symbol on the back here and we'll clear coat over that, seal that in. And then those easily enough will just drop right into place here. Haven't put that other one on there. And that is the majority of the inside of this vehicle. So really quickly this whole vehicle is coming together and been great fit. Everything kind of just pops together the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these pieces right now, get them all situated and glued into place. We will start gluing the rear suspension into place as well, and also get the uh, the other brakes, the, the rear brakes assemblies all built up as well. Okay, here we are. We're at uh, the stage now that we've got all of these parts glued into place. I've also just put the, the wheels and tires on Kind of temporarily, we can pull them off at any time because they are poly caps. But uh, we also went and put the rest of the decals in, like the GT. And just lightly, what I did inside here is I took a little of my metallic powder and just brushed it over some of the uh, the little console here. And it just makes all the things pop out. It doesn't actually make them look silver, it just gives them a little bit of a shine, but you can see definition in it. Very happy that though I went ahead with the red inserts. I think it really makes the uh, the whole thing kind of pop. Even using, if, if we were to paint it white, for example, you can see all the red through all the different angles. It's not gonna be white though, so. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm in the process of masking off all of the uh, the windshield, the side windows, as well as the rear window for the engine. And we've got it masked on the inside, and then we just took a layer of masking tape that we're putting around the entire back. That way we don't get any accidental overspray onto our nice, big, clean windshield. I've gone ahead and done this piece already. This is going to be the little rear window that we were just talking about for the engine, which we're going to start the engine very, very soon here. So here is the, the framework that goes on it. That just falls into place. And then this window will pop right in there. And that will be the, the area that we go for to show off our engine. 
So the only other thing I'm doing right now is I'm going ahead and I'm starting to put the decals, the GT decals, on the center hubs right here. We're going to put a couple of, couple of coats of Mark Fit Strong to get them to wrap around, and then we're going to uh, clear coat over them. Uh, the reason I'm doing them off of the actual wheels themselves is I don't want to get any clear coat on the actual uh, the wheels. I like exactly the way they are, and I don't want to change the tone or anything on it. So we're going to do all of that off of the vehicle, and then once these are fully all you know clear coated and sealed in, we'll cut them off and drop them into place on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off all of the... Uh, the masking on the windows. We've got just a couple other ones here. As you can see, our sides. And I'm not quite sure what those are for, but we'll figure that out in a minute. It might be for lights or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then paint those. And then we'll come back and we'll start working on the body color. Okay, I know this is a little bit of a change, but I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to paint this car this metallic red color. After looking online at the Ford site, uh, I saw the pictures of that red one with either the silver stripe or the white stripe. It looked really cool. And also, I've been getting a lot of people on the channel asking why I only use spray cans when I'm doing a model car. Why don't I use something like a uh, gloss paint? So I thought, it's true, I've done uh, the last couple of car kits and motorcycles all with spray cans. So I am going to go ahead and use this Splash Paint Vivid Red Cocktail. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful paint. It's a lacquer paint. I've always kind of avoided using some of those because I do a lot of the work in the store. But it's, uh, it's early morning here. We've got all the fans. i got my respirator, gloves, everything we need for it. So I think we're going to go ahead and spray the car down with a couple of coats of this. Well, there it is. There is. That's after putting two fairly liberal coats on this uh, on this model, and man, the paint laid down super, super ultra smooth. And my other thought was always too, if I screw this up, I can always paint it black anyway. So, but no, I seriously, I really like this red color. I think it's going to really pop when we either put the silver or the white uh, racing stripes down it. I've gone ahead and shot the uh, the car with just TS13 from Tamiya clear coat and really makes the the color come alive there. Uh, I guess you definitely need to add a clear coat to these and I'm going to do a little wet polish sanding on this and then put a couple more coats on and sand in between each one to get a real high gloss finish here. But very very happy with the way the uh the splash paints combined with the Tamiya clear can clear coat I should say has come out and I think this car is really going to pop that red color is very very nice okay I've been going over the car twice now using our Tamiya 3000 grit sandpaper we've been wet sanding and polishing out not so rough as that we go through the clear coat into the paint just to take out any imperfections in the paint and get it as or excuse me the clear coat and get it as smooth as possible and we're going to put one more coat of clear coat on then we're going to do the decals clear coat and a couple more times polish sanding it with the uh, the 3000 grit sandpaper i've also wanted to kind of show you since there's no clear coat on this right now to or wet clear coat i should say how all the little body panels, the black ones, are going to fit right on there. And then we also have this one right here that will fit right up in there. I think that is going to look really sweet with the, uh, the red and black together. 
So now I've also got the uh, the windshields done and the rear window. And the other ones are drawing for the side windows. And we have our, hopefully you can see them right there, our windshield wipers that we will go ahead and glue into place. And I didn't mess it up this time. I actually painted the correct side. The front and back window, you paint from the bottom. And that way you can see the kind of like the glossiness of it. But the side windows you paint from the outside. That way it looks like it's the rubber gasket going around. And they're over there drying on another table or I would show them to you right now. So I'm going to get the uh, windshield wipers glued into place. We're going to go put another coat of clear coat on that. Uh, right after I put the clear coat on too, we'll put a box over it just so we don't have any dust or anything. Living in Arizona, we get lots of that kind of stuff floating around. Get the box on it for a good half an hour, let it dry, and then dry a little longer. Do one more clear coat, and then we can start putting the decals on. Okay, we're assembling the engine in the car. As you can see right there, there is four parts total for the engine. So it's just a matter of painting one half uh, aluminum color, the other half black, and then finally this last piece is chrome color. Now there are a couple of decals that we need to put on here. And I'm gonna try to do it on camera, see if I can. Powered by Ford, yeah, right there. Wow, that almost fell exactly where I wanted it to go. That's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other one on the other side. And then once we get this all clear, oh, actually, this goes the other way. Once that gets all clear coated in, we will mount the engine right on top just like that. That is all that it takes for it. And then we can move on to the decals for the body. Okay, we're going to start doing the, the decals and... I guess we have a pretty shiny coat right there because the mark fit is beating up pretty well right on top there. And the first decal we're going to put on is the very front that's got the Ford symbol that'll go right in the middle. Okay, now we can go ahead and get this to line up. And we're also going to put some mark fit up on top, soften this decal, especially around here, because this has got a wrap underneath. This is probably going to take a couple of coats. I'm going to check one more time without the camera in the way, too, to make sure this is perfectly squared. And what we'll do now is I'm going to put on actually let this dry for about five minutes go over it with our cotton swab uh make sure everything's right go over it a couple more times with the mark fit to make for it just perfectly smooth on there here's another quick little builder's tip i can point out to you too every time you have a decal obviously there's going to be a number next to it and that number corresponds to the decal make sure when you're about to put the decal in the water that this is completely removed uh inevitably these little things right here break up and you'll sometimes get a little tiny piece of it on the decal so there'll be a little black squiggle on it that bonds really really well to that so make sure you cut those completely off before you decide to put them in the water just like that okay quick update on the decals these decals are very very thick and they need to be thick and that is because you do not want to have pink decals you want to have white decals on this red car so it is probably going to take four or five coats of mark fit because they, they're wrinkling up slightly and i keep going over it letting them dry and then we hit them with the cotton swab where we try to get all the air bubbles out so that's going to take a little bit of time but i think they're just looking incredible that red and white together i'm glad i went with that color right there it's really popping i think Okay, that's what it's going to look like with the uh, five coats of the Mark Fit on there and then the gradually massaging them as flat as possible with cotton swabs. I do have a little bit more on the back right here. I've got one little tiny wrinkle I'm still trying to get rid of. And it's almost completely gone, so we should have it done probably after this completely dries. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer for you guys. 
You can see that there is just a slight little lip on the edge of that, which we should hopefully be able to get rid of most of that with another two or three coats of clear coat. And in between each coat of clear coat, we are going to wet sand with the real fine grit uh, foam pads and try to get that knocked down and get a really, really deep shine and make it look like those markings are, you know, don't have that big lip on the edge of it. Now, I've been working on as well Right here we have our parts made up for the headlights so we can assemble all the headlight stuff now. And we're also going to get all of the other little louvers painted up. And one other thing I want to show you guys are these. I decided to go ahead and start making these now. Hopefully you can see them. These are all the clear, clear parts that have the mesh over them. We've also assembled the uh, tail lights as well too there. So I've got all of these built up and we'll be able to fit them in. We're going to uh, gloss coat over these right now because we want to make sure these decals don't pop off later on. In fact, speaking of that, since we are going to gloss coat the car, we could probably get these in and the gloss coat's not going to damage it all. But more than likely, we'll keep them out separate just in case we don't want anything pooling up on it. So I've got a little bit of work ahead of us right now to get care of all, take care of all those gloss coats. There's not a heck of a lot else to build right now, so I'll be working on that. I won't be showing too much of the, the sanding. It's just dipping this in water and then polish sanding it over and then putting more coats on. So I'm going to get all that done, and then I will show you the final assembly as we put in the windows, pieces like that. Wanted to show you guys real fast too. I love the way Tamiya did the uh, lenses for the headlights. They gave you lots of plastic, excess plastic for the inside to attach the uh, the light to. So you're not worrying about getting glue on the edge of it. So when you turn it over, you're gonna have a nice, clean, clean surface on it there. That's gonna look beautiful. And obviously I'm not putting these on yet. We're still gotta do some more clear coating. I just did a little bit of polish sanding right there. But those lights are gonna look great up front. Okay, we've put on multiple coats and sanded in between each one, and I think we've got a really good clear coat going on right now. Uh, so I'm going to leave that over to the side here. So this is the, the final group of parts that we need to install onto the body. We have all these, these vents. We have the headlights that we've built up. You can see those right there. Those are all ready to go on. We've got our windshield. We've put our rear view mirror in it. We've also got our all of our side windows finally done too. So everything, including in the tail light. So all the parts are ready to go. Now that we have the uh, the body done, we can attach all of this. Plus, we also have the marker lights as well as all those little uh, little mesh on top of the clear that we have to install. So we're going to probably install these first, the marker lights, and then start adding all the other components on top of it, which we're going to start right now. Here is the body with all of the uh, the components on it. We put all the louvers in, the windows, the uh, the front headlights, all the other stuff on it. And then I was doing a little test experiment with putting the body on just to test it down to the uh, onto the chassis. And for some reason, it locked in so well that I ended up breaking off the front part of the chassis. Uh, I don't know what locked in right up in this front piece right here, but it locked into the body and I ended up breaking the front off here. I mean, there was only a couple of little connection points we had to re-secure, but found that very, very weird. But the very fun part about the entire um, story was I was trying to fix the chassis and a tiniest little bit of uh, super glue accelerant hit the front windshield here and basically marred it. I didn't think it would do that, so I've been spending probably about 15 times now going over it with uh, wax and just polishing and buffing it out to get it to the point where it was horrible a little while ago, to the point you couldn't even see through this here, but I've gotten it so there's just a small little little mark right there that I'm going to keep working on. But what I thought I would do is actually show you a picture of this entire car before I mess it up any further because I had it just the way I wanted and then that happened and it literally almost hit the wall when that happened. But I calmed down and I came back and like I said, and I'm gradually taking it out. So I have that to work on for a little while, both front and back because it leaked through on both sides. You can see, a, hopefully you can see, I mean, it's very, very minor right now. 
but like I said, it was horrible earlier. So I'm going to go to work on that. And then I'm going to try to snap the body into place one more time. We've left the mirrors off right now, luckily, because those would have easily broken off if I would have glued them in for the amount of cleaning I had to do on this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll come back and show you the final product. Well, here we go, guys. Here is our completed model. And I spent a lot, a lot of time with cotton swabs and regular car wax to polish out that little flaw that we had in the upper window and uh, got it I'd say about 99% done and it's looking pretty good it might not even show up on camera at all to you guys now what I've done here is a couple things I've, I've literally just snapped the front and back of the car together onto the chassis and you might see like a little gap right here and that is because we can still flex this and get this uh, Part right here you hear that click to line up I will probably go ahead and glue that but I did not want to do that yet because part of me still wants to get in there and keep polishing out that window for a little bit so and because I did that we've also not attached these mirrors they kind of just fit in there by pressure and and gravity so I thought you know what we'll just leave them like that for now so if I do decide to take the chassis apart and uh, try to get in there I won't be knocking and breaking the mirrors permanently Okay, so now let's turn this turntable on to give you guys a 360 view of the entire car. First of all, uh, in the review video, we talked a lot about color, and I have to say I am very happy that I went with the metallic red. Hopefully you can see the speckle in it, and it just looks incredible in the uh, the bright light outside. It just just a wonderful color, especially with the black um, you know undertones here and all the little black pieces, and then that white racing stripe. Very very nice looking. And you know what? Probably all the other colors would look you know equally as well. I was toying with the blue, but I couldn't. I didn't think mica blue was exactly like what the box art showed. So thought let's go with the red. And the splash paint did a very very nice job on it. Uh, let's talk about the kit itself. Obviously, it's a Tamiya kit. Went together wonderfully. The, uh, the fit and finish was actually a, a fairly simple kit in the sense of building the chassis and stuff. The majority of the time spent was doing the paint job, just going over it and sanding it and back and forth on it. And everything kind of just fit the way it was supposed to. In fact, it was probably only about two days of actual build time to do the actual building and then a lot more with the, uh, the paint job. Very, very happy with it. And uh, to me, it's just done an absolute beautiful, beautiful model. So, like I was telling you earlier in the video, the, the kit will retail for $54 in the United States, so you'll be able to find them less than that, and they are due out, I believe, in January, the last I heard. So, if you are a fan of the 4GT, I would highly recommend you picking this kit up, because it is a beauty right here. So, hey, I want to thank you guys, as always, for watching, and please stay tuned, because we have many more videos coming.